Hello, and welcome to Simply Steam. I'm Ms. Gale from Boulder City Library. This video will be focusing on optical illusions. The word optic refers to the eye. Illusion refers to what you see or think you see. Optical illusions are just that. Sometimes they play a trick on your eye to make you think you're seeing something that isn't really there. This subject is big, really big, so I had to divide it into two parts. This first part will be focusing on optical illusions in art. You may have heard of an illusionist as another name for a magician. They are in the performing arts and that is what they do. They create illusions for entertainment. They use lots of optical illusions. Other types of artists use optical illusions when they paint a flat surface and make it look very dimensional. With the use of shading and proportion, an artist can make something that's flat look like something that's not. Here's one example. Notice here the big sea star. It's up close so you can see it very clearly. If you look through the shell, through the window, you'll notice a vast sea off in the distance. Now I'm sure you know that a sea star is smaller than the ocean because many, many sea stars live in the ocean along with a lot of other things, including a big gigantic whale. In this picture, the artist made the ocean much smaller, but in doing so, it looks like it's much bigger. That's the idea of perspective. I'll show you some other examples of how artists use shading and perspective in their work to convey an optical illusion. One example I'd like to show you is in a landscape picture. In this one, you'll see that line, proportion, and color all help to give this painting depth. It is on a flat surface. It's a painting on a canvas. What's hiding behind this explanation is this house, but you can see part of it here where the rails are pretty much defined. You could even count them if you really wanted to. And you can see the truck and the lines there. But as the picture goes further to the side, in your mind it looks like it's going back, but it's really only going to the side. But as it does this, you can see the houses are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and the detail is getting less and less to the point where here you can see each little piece in the porch railing and over here it's just kind of a blob because if you were looking at this picture in fact you can see it in here you can't really get a lot of detail the, the further you go in the distance the less detail that your eye can pick up artists use this in their paintings to give the illusion of depth over here you can see all of the little even like a little blade of grass is showing up but then the further you get back there's not as much definition basically they've just got the shape of the tree but you can't see the individual leaf on every tree another thing they do other than distorting detail they also distort the colors in the painting what will be closer to the viewer's eye or where you happen to be standing there you'd be standing in front of this house you'd see these colors very clearly and they get a little more subdued as you go back the size of things that get smaller as you get further away that's how artists use proportion and perspective in optical illusions in their paintings and they use color that goes from really bright and more vibrant color to more subdued the further the eye has to go and details kind of disappear as you go further back this is what artists do to create the illusion of distance if something is supposed to be far away they make it smaller if it's far away it's probably more difficult to see so there's less detail and the colors are more subdued just like in the mountain there. And they use highlighting and shadows or shading to give it an even more realistic illusion. With the help of colors, specific patterns, and light, images are created in a way so that the brain perceives them as different from what they really are. 
If you're interested in learning more about perspective, we have this book at the library, Perspective Without Pain. You can call our library and ask for this, and you can get it with our curbside service. This is a sidewalk chalk drawing, and it's done on a flat surface, the sidewalk. If you look carefully, you can see the lines that are in the sidewalk. So the word world, spelled out in these letters that are purple, are on the sidewalk. These people are also on the sidewalk, but they're not a part of the painting. They're actually people. Now, it kind of looks like this person is a lot bigger than that person. Perspective is what's happening here. This person's very close, and that person is further on down the sidewalk. This person went up to the top of the W and stretched out on top of it, even though it's flat on the sidewalk but she was imagining that she was sitting on top of the W. And then this person just placed his hands so that he could be holding the W, kind of like this. Maybe I'll just pat that guy on the head. Oh, nice little guy, there you go. Now, I wasn't really there at the time of the picture. And look how big I am. There's one finger compared to that guy. One person's finger isn't that big. But I could say, oh, I'm just going to touch his hat, and then I can just tap him on the shoulder. Hey, hey, that's how perspective works. It's just fooling the eye. Here's another one. This is Times Square in Times Square. This is on a sidewalk. You can see up here, there's the actual sidewalk. And then the person has painted on the sidewalk. So it's really a flat surface. But the person used line and color to make it look like, oh my goodness, that's a long way down, like that baby's standing right on top of a big old building. But actually, the baby's just standing on the very edge, pretending to look down into this big space, which really doesn't exist. Right here, you can see there's the sidewalk, but they've used a vanishing point, and they've drawn all of the lines to come down to this one point and then see how they've got way at the very bottom of the picture, or supposed picture. It looks very faint and hard to see. That gives the illusion that, oh, that's a long way down, when actually it's just on the very next block that that one's on. Here's another example of an artist's work that is creating an optical illusion. This is called My Wife and My Mother-in-Law. It was created by a cartoonist, W.E. Hill, in 1915. And if you look closely at this picture, you might see one of two things. You might see a young lady looking off over her shoulder to her right, or you might see an older lady with her head tucked down into her coat like she's very, very cold. Do you see the difference? So in one picture, this is the lady's, the young lady's face. There's her nose and her eyelashes. There's her hair and her pretty hat. And she's got her shoulders here and here with her coat. And maybe she's wearing a little necklace or something here. But if you look at it a little bit differently, and you see that this is the kerchief of this lady, and here's her hair, and her eyes are here and here. And she's got her nose right here and her chin tucked away into her coat trying to get warm. And there's her mouth. Do you see it? It's a little different, isn't it? Our project today is going to be this. Though. I'm going to show you how you can make your hand look like it's coming up off the paper. Now this is a hand that was drawn right onto a flat piece of paper. It's through the use of lines and the way they're drawn and shadows and where they are put that makes the difference. For this, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, markers if you wish, or crayons or colored pencils, and you'll need your hand. If you brought that with you, then go ahead and place it on the paper right there. 
And first thing you're going to do is trace around your fingers. And you can just bring it on down. Like that. And now we're going to make some horizontal lines around our hand. Wherever you see your hand, you're going to draw a line on the other side of it. So you don't draw the line through the hands where you drew your hand and arm. But you want to line this line up with that line as close as you can. If you want, you can use a ruler. Now when we get here, you can see there's this little tiny space right there that I had to draw the line, the straight line, the, from the background. That's what I'm trying to say. The background. And you want to make sure that you keep consistent with that all the way up or down, depending on which end you started at the top or the bottom. Okay, there's another little one there and now I'm going to go through and I've got to be real careful right here because I want to make sure that I don't go inside of the lines where the fingers are drawn but I want to stay on the outside so it looks like the background like my hand is resting on a table of stripes or maybe it's a strip tablecloth. I've heard it both ways. There we have it. Now that we have all of our straight lines, the next lines you're going to make are going to be curved lines. It's going to start where this other line ended and it's going to end where this other line begins. So you're just going to make one kind of an arch line. Okay. And you're going to do the same thing up on the next one. I'm trying to keep it as consistent as possible. Now over here, you can see we've got, let's see, we've got this line here and it comes over here. So I've got to attach these two, but I've also got to attach or put a little curve in between these two. And then here, it actually is going to almost get up in those fingers, but not quite. Now it does. So this one, so we're working on this line here. And this line has this part and this part. Okay, now this line here has many parts. There's this one. And we have to connect this to that. And that to that, and oops, <laughs> and that to that. And we go back over here, and we're down to just three fingers. And on this one, it's just the very tippy tip. So now you can see there's already kind of taking some shape here. Now, if you were to have your hand on a flat surface, you can see mine is casting some shadows. Where are the shadows? Well, they're kind of in between the fingers, but the light isn't quite getting in there, right? So that's where you're going to want to put some, just a little bit of shading, just a little bit of pencil mark. You can smudge, and you can smudge a little, making sure that all the smudges stay right there in the, on the background part, not on the fingers themselves. And if you do get any on there, it's okay. Now it's one researcher for and then clean up on the clean up on all 12. Clean up on your where your hand is. So it looks like all of the shadows are underneath. And now you can color it. I'm gonna use these twistable crayons. But any crayon would work, markers, color pencils. I'll pick three colors. You're going to color in the spaces each stripe. Now as you color in, 
when you're going on the straight, and this is particularly important with crayons and colored pencils because they leave kind of a, they leave these little lines that you can see. See how the little lines are there? So you want to color this direction, and then when you get up here, you want to kind of fill it in in this way, using this motion of a curve so that you will get a curvy look. Markers might not give you that same effect, but I know crayons and color pencils sure enough do. Okay, so when you do this, you may want to color in a little bit heavier just on the edges, just a slightly little bit. I mean, just ever, ever, ever so slightly. This is how artists use shading to create this effect that it's not flat. And then right in here where the light would be, if it was your arm, that would be where the light would, would shine and then you would want it to be, um, you wouldn't want as much color because there's more light. So it's going to be a little dark, darker and deeper on the sides. And you want, you could even do a little bit here and a little bit of there. Third color, and then you want to repeat. And I'm going to just go really lightly here so that I have room to add more if I want to shade. That's the idea. You're going to go, you're going to go all the way up your paper or down, depending on which end you start on. Lightly coloring. Enjoy! Here are some books you might be interested in checking out at the library. This one is by Eric Carl. It's called Hello, Red Fox. In this book, you are instructed to follow the simple steps. You have to stare at the dot inside of the shape, slowly count to 10 without moving your eyes, and then move your eyes to the dot on the opposite page and count to three. We'll see what happens. And that's with each little, there's a story that goes with it. And if you look at the butterfly, the dot on the butterfly, count to 10, look over here, you'll see something. And the same with the bird and all the other pictures. Kind of a fun little book that is about optical illusions and it teaches you about complementary colors. They also have this one called, Do You See What I See? The Art of Illusion by Prestel. This one is filled with a lot of fun little things. Maybe you've seen some of them. Escher is one of my favorites that I could just look at all day and never get tired of it. There's hidden pictures. And this one, similar to the one I just showed you, talks about complementary colors and how it can play tricks on the eyes. There's some information about perspective. This is one we have called Visual Illusions. You won't believe your eyes. And it's full of these kind of little tricks that your eyes can play on you. Again, there's Asher. And we have this one. It's called Incredible Eye Tricks. Can you see into the hidden pictures? Years and years and years ago, they had things called stereograms. And you had to stare into the picture and kind of relax your gaze in order to see the hidden picture. It's kind of tricky, but it can be done. But those are kind of fun. The thing about optical illusions in art, or in anything, it's really it's your eye seeing something and sending that message to your brain. And your brain processes the image knowing what it knows. When your eye sees something that your brain doesn't understand, the brain has to try and figure it out. And that's what makes most optical illusions work. Like this one here. Do you see this goblet here? Or whatever it is. Or do you see two faces looking at one another? Okay, I saved the best for last. That's this one right here. Make your own optical illusion, 50 hands-on models and experiments to make and do. This is a lot of fun. However, it is a library book, so you'll need to make copies of things. You won't have to make a copy of everything, but some of the things in here you'll have to make on your own. And they have, in the back of the book, 
there are these pieces, but you don't want to take those out because then other people can't use them because it is a library book. But you can certainly photocopy them and then leave them there for other people to use too. It'd be a lot of fun. And some things you just don't need, you can just use just from the book. Like this one, for instance, talks about these two buildings and why one might look like it's leaning a little more than the other. And these again are images. It's tricking the brain because you're seeing this kid climbing up these boxes, but how can that be? And this one is forced perspective illusions. Now this is something you could do that you don't need the book for, but you could do if you just have a camera and some willing subjects to help you out with it and a place to be. And you could do all kinds of fun little things where you, you have, that's called forced perspective, where you have something up close and then very far away, this person has moved their hands into such a position that it looks like those people in the very background that are really far away are standing on this one's hands. Anyway, this is a great book. It's full of all kinds of things that will amaze and astound you and probably cause you to want to get more books and read more about it because it's really interesting. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.